is this a prequel? Is it a reboot? What is it, Dan? Okay, so... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so... (laughs) The sigh kind of just says it all, really, doesn't it? It it does, doesn't it? (laughs) Right, so apparently this is going to be, like... A trilogy of prequels so you get chapter one chapter two chapter three it's really given like insidious vibes here mm-hmm. um now you wouldn't be wrong in saying that it looks crap uh yeah it is pretty crap shocker uh, i will delve into why it is crap but for those who aren't aware there is another two stranger films um you you just get a film called the strangers which came out yonks ago then you get a sequel to it called the strangers Pray at Night or something like that. I think it came out like 2012, 13, 14-ish, something like that. Something like that. I haven't known. I haven't watched it. Uh, it it's generally good. I mean, it's not by any means a, a solid home invasion, but the original Strangers is fairly entertaining. It's, it's an easy watch, is what I'm getting at. Uh, this, on the other hand, isn't. Um... <laughs> Well, you know, a plot rundown, you've got a couple celebrating their anniversary and they spend the night in a secluded B&B. Uh, it seems completely ideal at first until they hear a knock at the door. Um, the problem is, it it is it goes at like a snail's pace. It really, really does. Um, and possibly one of the most unlikable protagonists I've ever seen in a horror film with them. Um, Freya Gutierrez's character of Ryan. He is just so unlikable. Um, there is a hell of a lot reason why I don't like him, but I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, I think the thing that really annoyed me the most is there's so much wasted potential for an actor who isn't even on screen for five minutes. Really? You've got Richard Brake, who's very renowned in a lot of the Rob Zombie horror films. Um, very, very good horror actor. He, he plays like a sheriff, doesn't say a word of dialogue. He's just sat in this diner, just looking around like that. I'm like, did you seriously just get him in that for that? I'm like, w- why? <laughs> so much waste of potential. Um, so as I mentioned with Ryan, Ryan's asthmatic, and you get the the first sign of this when there's like a near road traffic collision. He starts having a bit of a an asthma attack from the shock of it. Um, the inhaler is never ever used again and it is quite obviously you know asthmatic during all this like harassment from the stranger things he's never used it once he loses it in the woods and it's never seen again so if he's asthmatic why isn't he using it Mm. so yeah they just you know he's clearly not that asthmatic if he just you know he can be tormented by three strangers terrorising them but you know, a little little road traffic collision. He's like, <gasps> Ryan. <laughs> the intruders are creepy as hell. I will admit there is some really creepy moments. But this is the problem with modern day horror stuff. I feel that there's a lot of false jump scares, and that really annoys me because it just gives you like such false hope where it's like. Ah, there's somebody behind the door. Oh no, it's just a shoe falling in the closet. I'm like, oh come on. Like a lot of fake scares, and when they're actually real scares, like these people are human. At least I assume they're human. Just you know, they just prey on people for the sake of doing it because they're there. That's their motto, more or less. But you've got a scene where our lead protagonist can't remember her name. It's not really important because. Again, much like Ryan, he's just a bit... There's nothing really going for her. So she's sat playing the piano. A little piano there. And you get one of the strangers sitting in the chair behind her. I mean, the the guy who is... I think he's called, like, the Scarecrow or something like that, because he's got, like, a like a sack Scarecrow-type mask on. He's sat in an armchair, and this dude is, like, a hulking brute with a big axe. And I refuse to believe that she didn't see or hear him when he got mm. up. Because it does like that little silly little camera trick where you you go you you cut to that you cut to this and then oh he's gone, like mm, it kind of says well is he a ghost or does he like have really 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 quiet boots where he can just I'm picturing something like the Grinch when he's stealing all the presents. Oh and he's honestly, just yeah, it, the it, like, like he must seriously have like Grinch styled walking. 
if nobody can hear him. I mean, clearly it's the same because they're in the woods. They never, ever step on twigs or anything like that. Hmm. Like, they, they have mapped the woods out. They know where every little stick is. Uh, I think the thing that really ruined it for me is that it actually has a post-credits. Um, is there a possibly the most pointless post-credits scene. I mean, I know we've had a lot of, like, a mostly pointless MCU post-credits as well that just lead up to something else. This one doesn't. It's just another false scare of our female protagonist in the hospital. She survived, and, oh, the strangers are there. Oh, point of that was. You're not leading up to anything. You're just trying to give us one last scare when you already failed to do it. Mm. And, well, I think this is just a thing with sort of home invasion horrors. Like, yes, it it goes in line with the tropes, but do they have to make so many stupid decisions? Like, if you're being terrorised, why would you go outside when they're outside? <laughs> yeah, if you had the chance to kill them, why didn't you kill them? I mean, yeah. I'm not even kidding. There's a scene where Ryan has a shotgun against the skull of one of the other strangers. Like, you could literally just do it. There was somebody in the cinema just saying, just do it! Because <laughs> there was only six people in our screening. Literally, like, dotted around the screen. I think it was, like, two at the back. There was me and my partner in the middle, and then, like, another two near the front. It was it was totally dead, and I can see why, because, you know, it, it was a bit of a waste of time, and all honesty, there was nothing truly enjoyable about it mm. so i'm not really looking forward to whatever these other two chapters have to offer because this didn't offer an awful lot it was a bit I, of a i wasn't expecting much to be honest but i did think the trailer looked pretty decent but i think the trailer just sort of gets to the good bits with the strangers mm. anytime the strangers are involved it gets that slight bit better but a lot of the as false as... jump scares ruin a lot of that creepiness 